In this video, I'm going to show you how to subnet. There are a few different ways out there in which to subnet, but they all boil down to your binary to decimal and your decimal to binary conversions. So if you're not familiar with your binary to decimal and decimal to binary conversions, I highly encourage you to go back and review that material. I have a video post that's showing how to do those binary to decimal conversions. It's also in the Cisco curriculum as well. Before doing any type of subnetting, I'd like you to draw up your chart on the board or on your piece of paper that you're working on. That chart consists of 8 bits. And the reason why we have 8 bits is because each octet of an IP address is made up of 8 bits. Of an IP version 4 address, that is. So here are my 8 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And each one of these bit placeholders has a value. We start on the right hand side with 1, and we double as we go to the left. So 1 doubled is 2, 2 doubled is 4, 4 doubled is 8, 8 doubled is 16, 16 doubled is 32, 32 doubled is 64, and 64 doubled is 128. These are also our power numbers. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 to the 2nd is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is 64, and 2 to the 7th is 128. And as you'll see, these power numbers are going to become very important to us. With this chart, you would be able to do any type of submitting that you would need to do for this class. There are two different ways in which you can subnet, either by location or by the number of hosts or PCs that you have. The first way I'm going to show you is by the number of locations. So let's pretend that you're given the network ID of 192, 168, 1.0 24. So you have this big large network and you want to break it down to smaller, more manageable chunks or smaller, more manageable networks. That's the point of submitting. Taking one big large network, breaking it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. So we have this big network, and we want to divide it up into six different locations. So we have six locations. Now the first thing that you need to do is figure out how many locations or how many PCs that you need. And in this case, I'm giving that to you. And in some scenarios, we'll have to add up how many locations there are. You'll have to add up how many PCs there are if you're doing it by PCs. So in this uh, scenario, I'm giving you the number of locations, and that is six. One important rule I want you to remember is that when we're working with locations, we're working the left-hand side of the line, and we're working with ones. If we're going to work with PCs and subnet for the number of hosts or PCs, we're going to work the right-hand side of the line, and we're going to work with zeros. So like I said, we're doing this for locations, so we're going to think left-hand side of the line, and ones, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a little bit. So six locations. What I want to do is I want to figure out two to what power is going to give me at least six locations. So this is where my chart comes into play. I look on this chart and I can see that two to the third power is eight. Two to the third power is going to give me the closest to my six locations uh, without being under. Two to the second just isn't enough, so I can never be under, but I can be a little bit over. So 2 to the 3rd is what I want to choose for 6 locations. What that power number, or what that 3 means, is how many bits I'm going to be borrowing from this last octet. I'm going to borrow 3 bits. So once you've figured out your power number, what you want to do is you want to draw out your IP address with those bits borrowed. Here's what I mean by that. I draw out 192, 168, one dot, here comes my three bits that I borrowed. One, two, three, you draw your line. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, eight total bits in that last octet. Two to the third, there are my three bits borrowed right there. I draw those out in binary. Once we have that, underneath my line, I make everything zeros. And then I convert this number, which is all zeros, into decimal. 
Well, all zeros is just zero. And your first octet's always going to start with zero. Then I make the right-hand side of the line only, just the right-hand side of the line, all ones. And then I figure out what this number is. I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And if you're not sure, you can take that number and you can put it underneath your chart. And anything with a 1 I add up. So I have a 16, an 8, a 4, a 2, and a 1, which is 31. So I figured out my first range is going to be or my first network. So when I have all zeros on the right-hand side of this line, all zeros on the right-hand side of the line, that would be my network ID, where this identifies the subnet or the network that I'm working with. When I have all ones, on the right hand side of the line. That identifies my broadcast address. A broadcast address is when you want to send everybody within this network's, network's uh, segment. And there's my 31. Once we have our first range, I essentially have my pattern that I can, can continue on with the rest of my networks. I always go with one more than the last. So 1 more than 31 is going to be 32. And the pattern that I developed is a difference of 31. Here I have a difference of 31. So all I need to do is add 31 onto my 32, and I end up with 63. So now my second network identifier, to identify that second network that I have, is going to be a dot 32. One more than the last would be 64. Add 31 onto there, and I have 95. One more than the last is 96. Add 31 is 127. And I just continue that pattern until I get to 255, which is the highest possible I can have for an octet. Add 31 onto that, 159. 160 through 191, 192 through 223, and 224 through 255. So I have all of these different network identifiers here. I only needed six locations, but I happen to have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have some room for growth, some room for expansion, which is great. All of these numbers on the right hand side again are my broadcasts. So if I wanted to send a message to every single computer in the third network location, here's my third network location, I would send that uh, message to the 192.168.1.95 address. 1.95 address. The subnet mask for every single one of these ranges and locations is going to be the same. And that subnet mask is always right up here at the very top when you drew out your bits that you borrowed. I started with a slash 24, and that means I have 24 ones in my subnet mask. And if I drew out 24 ones, it would look like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and then I have all zeros. Well, that converted to 255, 255, 255, dot zero. Well, now what I did is I borrowed some bits out of this last octet, and they're right up here at the top. So I had 24 ones to start with. Here's my 25th, my 26th, and my 27th one. So that would be a slash 27 as my subnet mask for all of those ranges. That converted back into decimal is I have a 128, a 64, and a 32. Again, you can take this number, put it right underneath your chart. A 128, a 64, and a 32 is 224. So my subnet mask for all of those ranges is a triple 255 dot 224. 
Now when I go to assign IP addresses to PCs on these different networks, I can't use the first because that's my network identifier. And I can't use the last because that's my broadcast. So if I asked you the question, uh, what is the first IP address that you can assign to the fifth network? What would you tell me? Well, here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth network. I'm working with this 125, or excuse me, 128 network. And the first PC I could assign would be the dot .129. Again, I can't use the dot .128, that's my ID would be the dot .129. So I would have the address of 192.168.1.129. The last PC that I could assign in that range would be the dot .158. 158. Can't use the 159, that's my broadcast. So again, essentially what you do to figure out your subnetting is to drop your chart, then figure out how many locations that you need, from the number of locations that you need, you figure out your power number. And that power number, in our case it was three, tells you how many bits that you borrow from that last octet. Once you have the bits that you borrow, you draw out your IP address with those bits borrowed. You put all zeros underneath. It's going to come out with zero. Then you take all ones on the right hand side and figure out that. Then from there you'll have your pattern number. And our pattern number was basically 31. So we added 31 onto each one of these ranges and came up with what we needed. I'm going to go through one more quick example here. We'll use that same exact network ID that we were given, 192.168.1.0. But this time we're going to do it for just four locations. Just four locations. So I ask myself, 2 to what power is going to give me at least 4 locations? So I look at my chart, and I can see that I have one here. 2 to the second is exactly 4. That would work. A requirement's 4. 2 to the second will work just fine. So what that 2, that power number, tells us is that we're going to be borrowing 2 bits from that last octet. So we draw out our IP address with those bits borrowed. Here it is again, 192. 168, 1.12. Two bits from my power number, draw my line, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need 8 total bits in that last octet. Now underneath, I make everything zeros. This will give me my first network ID, which is always going to start with 0. Make my right hand side 1's. Now I figure out what this number is. And that number there is 63. So now I have my pattern number and I can continue that. One more than 63 is 64. Now I'm going to add 63 onto that, which is 127. One more than 127 is 128. Add 63 onto that is 191. One more than 191 is 192. Add 63 onto that, that is 255. So there are my four locations, or my four ranges, or four subnets, whatever you want to call it, that meet my requirement that I gave you. The subnet mask for every single one of those ranges, again, always right up here at the very top. I started with a slash 24. Here's my 25th and my 26th one. So I have a slash 26, that converted back into decimal, because I have the 128, and I have the 64, which is 192. So I have a triple 255, dot 192. Again, I cannot use any of this first numbers to assign PCs because those are my network IDs. They identify that network. And I cannot use the last because those are my broadcasts. One thing you'll start to notice is as you do more subnetting, you start to see the same numbers over and over and over again. And that's because of the way the bit patterns work out. I'm never going to see a range that's uh, 0 through 50. 
where I'm never going to see a range that starts with uh, 131 through 150. It just does not work like that, the way the bit patterns work out. You're never going to see that. So you're going to start to see the same numbers over and over and over again. Same with your subnet masks. We're only going to see certain subnet masks. We're going to see a 22550.0. We're going to see a 22550.128.192.224.240.248 and a dot .252. We're never going to see a dot uh, 22550.200 as a subnet mask. It just does not work that way, the way your bit patterns work and how you borrow those, those, uh, those binary digits. Hope that gives you some insight on how to do subnetting. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. But following these steps for locations, you should be able to do any of the scenarios that you're given in class. Uh, thanks for watching.